The purpose of uh, this, pre uh, this presentation is to uh, suggest the possibility of, of research on the project based on local newspapers <coughs> in Kobe. Until 1990s, uh, Kobe port had been a, a major port of international <coughs> trade, as important as Yokohama. Because of its importance, many records are still available today, so research can be based on such records, many of which are available at the Kobe City Archives. I picked out uh, some articles showing a uh, <coughs> few aspects of the currency reform. Here I will give you a <coughs> basic explanation about the adoption of the gold standard in Japan. Uh, the coinage, coinage law was promulgated on the uh, 29th March in 1897 uh, and went into operation on the 1st October in 1897. As to the adoption of the gold standard, there was uh, controversy concerning Japan staying on the silver or going on the gold standard. Focusing on international trade, the gold standard's benefit is to lower the, the exchange rate risk. A negative effect is to lose the advantage of the fall of the silver price. At last, the uh, registration was passed on the 29th March in 1897. At the change of a monetary system, the new standard currency was valued equal to the old one. So the value of the new one yen gold coin was fixed as equal to that of the one yen silver coin. Such convenience was brought about by having the weight of the one yen gold coin under the coinage law. As a result, there was no change in the existing prices. From, <coughs> from 1640 to 1859, international trade of Japan had been under restricted control of the Tokugawa government. The sudden arrival of the U.S. fleet in 1853 initiated an opening to foreign co contacts and foreign trade. Less restricted inter international trade started in the latter half of the 19th century. At first, Yokohama was unrivaled in terms of the value of trade, but Kobe developed rapidly and caught up with Yokohama finally around uh, 1900. In terms of trade items, there was a large difference between Yokohama and Kobe. Until the 1880s, cotton cloth accounted for 30% of the import in Kobe. From the 1880s to the mid-1890s, cotton thread import increased rapidly to fulfill the demand of the weavers of the area. Finally, the industry was able to produce its own cotton thread, so that raw cotton became the major import item. The cotton spinning industry developed so rapidly, mainly in West Japan, that some people said, East Japan does raw silk, West Japan does cotton spinning. To help the industry extend the tariff of cotton thread export and the tariff of raw cotton import were abolished in the middle of the 18, 1890s. Except these items, sugar and oil were in large volume uh, consistently. Especially in import, Kobe overtook Yokohama and had a share of 55% in 1899. Until early 1890s, primary products such as rice, tea, copper, tin, 
camphor and vegetable wax were the major export items of Kobe port. Later, some more industrial but still labor intensive products like uh, decorated mats, matches, and cotton flannel increased. As the import to Kobe was usually a lot higher than its export, it created a trade deficit. As Yokohama specialized in silk, the export items from Kobe varied widely from those of Yokohama. Uh, this table shows the ratio of international merchants in Kobe port. Although Japanese commerce had been developing during the latter half of the 19th century, Japanese merchants didn't show much initiative in foreign trade even at the early 20th century. On the other hand, foreign merchants kept their commercial supremacy and accounted for over 50% of the volume of the international trade. Sorry. Ah, sorry. Mm. Sorry. Uh, again, <laughs> this table shows the ratio of uh, international merchants in Kobe port. Uh, although Japanese commerce had been developing during the latter half of the 19th century, uh, Japanese merchants didn't show much initiative in foreign trade at uh, even at the early 20th century. On the, on the other hand, foreign merchants kept their commercial supremacy and accounted for over 50% of the volume of the international trade. Uh, developing as an international trade... Sorry, can you speak a little bit louder? Because ah, okay. So they Developing as an international trade port, Kobe became home to some larger companies doing international trade, something like Mitsui. There were also some branches of foreign and Japanese banks. Yokohama PC Bank started in 1880s and specialized in the foreign exchange business. Uh, there was a foreign <coughs> settlement in Kobe, uh, like in other open ports such as Yokohama and open markets such as Edo and Osaka. Foreign companies were very restricted to within the settlement. As a result, uh, they could not penetrate into the domestic markets freely. It was a fortune for the, the autonomous development of Japanese industry and commerce. In the early 1890s, there were about 2,000 inhabitants in the foreign settlement in Kobe. The Chinese accounted for about 50% and the British followed with about 400 inhabitants. The Kobe Stock Exchange used the Mexican da silver dollar as international key currency. As mentioned before, Kobe port developed rapidly. There had been a few failed attempts to create trade organizations, but finally, in the 1880s, some strong organization came to life. The stock exchange was founded in 1880s, 83, and the commodity exchange in 1887. In the Kobe commodity exchange, grain, rice, grain, rice, wheat, soybeans, and then uh, fertilizer made fr from fish parts were dealt. In 1890s, the Chamber of Commerce received an approval of in incorporation. In 1882, the Bank of Japan was established and started to issue its convertible notes in 1885. So the currency system of Japan became more centralized and more stable under the silver standard at last. 
Before the central bank notes convertible to silver, various types of ca、uh, currencies, such as crown notes, bank notes, local and central government notes, and coins were in circulation. As to the crown notes, they were issued by feudal crowns in each domain in the Tokuga period, so that it took about nine years to replace them with other modern currency. I would like to show you some articles related to currency problems and picked out from local newspapers in Kobe. Among the local newspapers, the following three are the most easily available for our purpose. The years given behind the newspapers show the, the available newspaper years at the Kobe City archives. Although number one or number three are better from the viewpoint of documentation,、uh, unfortunately, English newspapers are only partly. Available during the transition period from silver to gold. But as mentioned before, the benefit of the gold standard was controversial. The controversy about the introduction of the gold standard did not end with its adoption. The execution of the change created some major problems, which were prob problematic for many traders. But at the same time, gave fresh opportunities to those with initiative and imagination. The articles show us what was going on during the reform, how people behaved in the transitional period, and how they assessed the situation during, during and after the, the adoption of the gold standard.、Uh, in today's presentation, I would like to have a closer look at some of the articles from the Kobe Chronicle. This article appeared in the issue of the 21st August in 1897. As it is a little long, I divided it into three parts. In this article, the Kobe Chronicle is disputing a statement from the Nippon. A newspaper based in Tokyo. The Nippon is supporting the, the adoption of the gold standard, but according to the Chronicle, their argument is weak. In contrast to the Chronicle's statements, <coughs>、uh, in contrast to the Chronicle statements,、uh, The ap、uh, appreciation of the Japanese yen in Hong Kong definitely affected the foreign trade in Japan. This is the second part of the three. They worry that the change to the gold based currency will cheapen the silver value. And that the real question should be what effect will the fall in price of silver have, been, have on the country's trade? The Chronicle quoted the British Consul General in Shanghai to support their argument. The change cannot have the Effect of raising the value of silver. The majority of the commercial men in China believe that a silver using country has the advantage and not only recover her own markets but also capture the neutral markets of the world. The point of the, the article is as follows If Japan changes to the gold standard, China would become superior to Japan in global markets. The Nippon, supporting Count Matsugata, who was as Prime Minister and Finance Minister, the major proponent of the gold standard, neglected the demerits of the change deliberately. Based on the content, the Kobe Chronicle 
suggests a kind of weakness or unfairness of the Nippon, which was located close to the central government. This article appeared in the issue of the 4th September in 1897. Here an interview with an Osaka merchant on the China trade was introduced. Osaka was the, the most important city of commerce in Japan since the 17th century, so some people today call the Osaka of the time the economical capital. Depending on this fact, the view of the Osaka merchant seems to be worth listening to. According to his words, in the competition with developed countries such as the UK or the US, the secondary sector of industry in Japan would certainly lose its advantage in the China trade due to the change to the gold standard. But the primary sector of industry in Japan would be able to keep its supremacy if the secondary sector were to compete harder, especially with developed Western countries. This Osaka merchant's view likely reflects the international merchant's worry and discontent. And I think the fact that the reporter of the Kobe Chronicle went expressly to interview the merchant also suggest a kind of uneasy atmosphere in Japan. This article appeared in the same issue as previous one. It is not clear at present what the vernacular journals referred to here are, but it would be true that, to some extent, similar opinions spread in the media of the, those days. So I would like to show my interpre interpretation tentatively. The comments of the vernacular journals seem to say as follows. If Japan would change to the gold-based currency, the Japanese economy would lose it, its advantage so that a trade deficit would result. Therefore, the gold coins were taken out of the country. On the other hand, the silver coin would flow into the country from places like Hong Kong in exchange for the gold coin. As a result, the money supply in Japan would decrease so that the price level would begin to fall. Finally, the fall in prices would recover the, value, uh, the volume of export from Japan, which, according to the article, is a national blessing. In short, a kind of the benefit of the gold standard could be realized effectively. In other words, the theory of the gold standard that the economy could be stabilized by pro a price control through increase or decrease of money, money supply was viewed optimistically. This article appeared two weeks after the previous one. It seems that a bank in Hong Kong took measures to relieve the critical situation in, in and around Hong Kong due to the withdrawal to, of Hong Kong currency by using Japanese silver coins. As to, as to that, the China Mail asked the Hong Kong government to supply subsidiary coins. That means that a certain financial institution chopped the yen currency into subsidiary coins to meet the necessity. As you can see, uh, there was a lot of opposition to the gold standard. What I would like to concentrate on, its, on is the controversy itself, the government's reaction to the opposition, and maybe the, the possible safeguards some of the opposing traders took when the gold standard went into effect. So thank you very much for your presentation. Again, we have some time before lunch for several questions and comments. Please. 
Uh, not a question, but a comment. It's a, of course, the m most important point is the, the divergence between Japanese newspaper and the English newspaper. And the, I don't think it is just a coincidence it happened in 1893 and 1897, because the same <coughs> argument exists in Indian business circuit. 1893, the India the stopped the free minting of silver coinage, and 1897 the move to sold the gold standard or gold exchange standard. Then the British or native Indian, they make strong opposition to the move to gold standard because it's see, no doubt the decrease of the profitability in their market in China. The Bombay depended on seriously the, the, the cotton mill depend on Chinese market, and the abandoned silver coinage means their currency it, the, uh, the appreciate and lose market. That is exactly what the, the Western Japanese merchant afraid of. So I wonder some mutual inference exists between the, the Indian circuits and Indian business circuits and Western J Japanese circuit, they all, they both are the connected through the Chinese the business circuit. Thank you. Please, do you want to make any comment? Ah, no. no? Okay. Uh, is there any other question? Comment. Because I have, I have one question regarding the, the effects of adopting the gold standard in in the country, because I have seen the controversy in the, in the press, in the newspapers. Yes. But I don't know if um, after the adoption of the, of the gold standard, there was uh, such an uh, external uh, withdrawal of uh, gold outside the country, so monetary reserves fell, and price level fell as well, so a deflation at home, and all mm. these uh, market adjustments we know from the gold standard era. Can you comment a little bit about that? Oh, it Gold standard system yeah. uh, effectively uh, function. If yes, yeah. if after adopting, adopting uh, the gold standard, uh, prices did fall in Japan, and what happened with the with the reserves and the uh, price level? Basically, I don't I don't think so uh, because uh, uh, the Bank of Japan could uh, issue its uh, note. Uh, we, uh, over the limitation uh, in some cases. So uh, other um, stabilization uh, function in Japan. So, uh, so in, case, mm -hmm. in case there were, there were a trade deficit, the Bank of Japan issued paper notes uh, yes, yes. to compensate the, uh, the yes. loss of, of reserves in the country. Yes. So they were not uh, deflations in the country, as far as I see it. Uh, the Bank of Japan uh, try to try to prevent uh, the drastic uh, uh, fluctuation of money supply. To okay. so thank you. Any further comments or questions? So thank you very much again for your presentation. Thank you all, and I think we have uh, a break for the lunch time now.